Chemical Kinetics Lecture Part 1 This lecture is made on the basis of reference book Chemistry The Molecular Nature of Matter by Jaspersen and Hislop mainly followed 7th edition books. To some case, I also checked 6th edition of this book. What is chemical kinetics? Chemical kinetics is the study or area of study where to learn speed or rate at which chemical reactions occur. That means how fast and how slow the chemical reaction occurs. We may know that some reactions are just happen in a second or for the some chemical reactions we need to wait in the laboratory hour after hour. So by the study of chemical kinetics we will sort out how and why this happens and how we can calculate the rate of chemical reaction and how we can control the rate of chemical reaction everything we will be checking out here. First we need to learn what are the factors that accelerates the chemical reactions or control the chemical reactions. Factors that affect reaction rate of chemical change. The rate of a reaction for a given chemical change is the speed or the rate with which the reactants concentration disappear that means reactants disappearance and the product formation so the concentration of reactants decreases with time and the concentration of product increases at as products form with time when a reaction is fast more product is formed no doubt now let's check it out what are the factors. Chemical nature of the reactants, ability of the reactants to come in contact with each other, concentrations of the reactants, temperature and availability of red accelerating agents called catalyst. Chemical nature of the reactants themselves. Each and every molecules or particles or atoms we have in the nature have their own properties, own way to react with others. Here we can see the two examples of reaction. In the left side here we can see sodium loses electrons easily and it reacts with water very quickly. In the right side we can see the reaction is more quick and even you can say violent because potassium loses electrons even more easily than sodium. So we can now guess why it important to study and the rate of the chemical reaction is always depend and varies for each and every reaction differently. Second factor the ability of the reactants to come in contact with each other. Obviously if we want to do the reaction we need to come in contact with the reactants. Before going that, we need to know that there are two types of reactions, homogeneous reactions and heterogeneous reactions. Homogeneous reactions are those where all of the reactants are in the same phase, means either solid, liquid or gas. Here you can see the example like sodium hydroxide react with hydrochloric acid it is a kind of neutralization reaction to produce sodium chloride and water 
both reactants dissolve in water. On the other hand, when reactions proceed in different phases, for example, aluminium, solid aluminium, react with oxygen, produce solid aluminium oxide. Now, we often see in the laboratory when we do experiment, lots of experiment like salt or different types of molecules, we dissolve in different phase and we do the liquid phase. Because here molecules can easily come in contact to each other or reactants. And also liquid or gas phase, they also determine the rate of reaction. In case of solid particles, in case of solid molecules, what you can see here, only surface molecules of solid or surface reactants can come in close contact and do collide and as a result the reaction occur to form product. So if we can crush or grind the solid particles into a small particles and we can enhance the sur total surface area that means the chance of reactants to come in close contact and perform the reaction is higher than the solid like bigger size cube so we can say that how then the reactants to come together is important and accelerate the rate of reactions. Concentration. As we know concentration most of the time enhances the reaction rate of chemical chains during the chemical reaction. Because if the concentration of reactants higher that means the number of reactant particle is more to come in contact and go for collision and go for reaction to form product. Here in this particular image you can see the steel wool is reacting so quickly and burns spectacularly with the pure oxygen instead of air. Normally Air contains the 21% oxygen where pure oxygen normally 30% or like that. It is estimated that if wood burns in the pure oxygen more quickly and instantaneously than the air and if it really happens it would be very difficult and impossible to put out the forest fire next in this particular figure we can see the change of concentration with time Reaction rate here are measured by monitoring concentration change over the time. The blue line is representing the reagents A and B molecules in red is increases when the reactants disappearing. That means products are forming. So, in the beginning of the reaction, we can say that the time 0 and the beginning of the reaction, the concentration was here, point 0.1. Once the time passes, concentration of reagent A is decreasing and the product is forming. So, the concentration of product is raising. So we can see the relationship 
and the effect of concentration time curve how product can form by changing the concentration of reagent over time temperature number 4 factor is temperature as you all know when we increase the temperature the speed of movement of particle enhance when movement of particle enhance the overall activation energy gets higher as a result reaction rate gets faster there are most of the reactions that we use heat to enhance the reaction rate chemical reactions occur very faster as i just said here is a very interesting example we can also mention like insects insects are cold blooded animal whose body temperature is maintained by their surrounding natural temperature during the winter season those insects get very sluggish because their movement gets slow due to lower temperature and their body biochemical process is also gets slower number 5 catalyst that also accelerated the chemical reaction catalyst are substances that increase the rates of chemical reaction without being used up they are not going to directly participate in the reaction but they create the environment to push the reactants to proceed on the best example of the catalyst are enzymes into our body system always controlling our biochemical reactions there's numerous applications of enzymes in the chemistry in the pharmacy or healthcare even in the technology different types of industry like to make gasoline plastics fertilizers etc here we can see the one example of reaction of forming the water in the presence of platinum hydrogen react with oxygen and can form the water and this reaction is run by the presence of catalyst platinum now we will be little talk talking about the measuring reaction rate we have already seen and know that during the chemical process or the chemical change the concentration of reactants decreases as the reactants participate in a reaction by changing or breaking the old chemical bond and to form the new bond with new product so this concept of creating new product by chemical reaction or we can say the rate of this chemical reaction per unit time so we know that we are starting with a specific amount of reactants but we don't know that how slow or faster the reactants are disappearing to produce the product so, but we can calculate it experimentally and also from data analysis from our equation that if we can calculate the disappearance per unit time 
For example, if we have a job and we do our labor, let's say that the pizza, somebody work in a pizza store and get the salary ten dollars per hour. So we normally calculate the rate of pay per unit time. In case of the reaction, chemical kinetics, the chemical reaction, we also consider the change of concentration per unit time. In case of rate of pay, where the time is always denominator, when we will be calculating the change of concentration with time, we will also considering the same way. During the chemical reaction, the concentrations of reactants decreases as they are used up. We already know the product increases, product concentration increases because they are forming. So, the rate of chemical reaction with respect to reagents always will be negative since the concentration is using up and the rate of reaction with respect to product will always be positive since it is forming. Now if we considering the rate of reaction of anything or any substance for instance X then how we can write the change in concentration of substance X with respect to time. So the change of concentration what is the change of concentration? So we start experiment at zero time with some certain concentration and over the time the concentration disappearing and when it's ending. So the change of concentration is concentration of x at time f that means end minus concentration of x at time i initial divided by final time minus initial time. So we can also write capital delta as a change of concentration divided by capital del T as a concentration of time. In this section we frequently you will be using molarity mole per liter in terms of concentration per unit time. So you can see the mole per liter per second will be the unit to measure the rate of reaction. Now before moving on to this problem solving, here we can see the one balancing chemical reaction. I want to also mention here that in this chapter we will use the knowledge of stoichiometry and the coefficients because coefficient represents in the chemical reaction the mole or molar amount. So when we will considering the measuring the reaction rates, we will considering the mole concentration per unit time. It can be second, minute or hour but we will be frequently using per second. Now let us see the problem solving and how we can uh, measure reaction rate of this particular reaction. In this certain experiment c 4 h 10 the butane concentration is decreasing at a rate of 0.2 mole liter per second. What is the rate at which the oxygen concentration is decreasing? So that means we need to find the rate at which the oxygen concentration decreasing with respect to the butane. Also we have to find out what are the rates at which product concentration are increasing with respect to butane because butane is using up along with oxygen 
that means oxygen is also using up and butane and oxygen both reacting to forming product carbon dioxide and water. Now before moving forward I want to just review the our previous knowledge that from the balancing of chemical equations what type of information we can get and how we can explain it. First of all we can learn the coefficient or mole amount. So from this reaction we can explain that 2 mole butane is reacting with 13 mole oxygen and producing 8 mole carbon dioxide and 10 mole water. We can also tell this is homogeneous reaction because I can see all are in the same phase. Now if we look into here that our, our starting or total butane in concentration is 2 mole but obviously we don't know how fast and slow is uh, butane is um, burning with in oxygen but here we have the information that 0.2 mole per liter per second so now we have information that though we start with 2 mole but obviously 2 mole will, will not use up to at a time so per second per second per unit second time 0.2 mole butane is using up so our first question to calculate then how many mole of oxygen is reacting with this 0.20 mole of butane concentration so let's see how we can calculate if we see here that we have we have the mole ratio between oxygen and butane 13 is ratio 2 we will apply this mole ratio knowledge here to calculate the mole of oxygen that will be reacting with respect to 0.2 mole butane so this is our mole ratio and this is our butane here I want to just tell you uh, the basic things that when we do this type of mathematics or problem solving in chemistry we do a lot different types of conversion in terms of time changing unit from one unit to another even for changing the molarity gram different types of so whatever the unit we need to find out we need to always write on the top sometimes we also say as a conversion factor anyway so if we nullify this mole mole butane and butane so what we have if we calculate we can see the one point one point three mole oxygen per liter per second will react with 0.2 mole butane. Now our second question was to find out the rate at which oxygen concentration uh, dec we did it. Now we need to find out the rate at which product concentration are increasing because products are forming. So they are telling products they are not telling that carbon dioxide or water so when generalize the question we will have we need to find out both and if they say that either carbon dioxide or water then we need to find out a specific one so we apply our similar knowledge here the mole ratio between carbon dioxide with respect to butane and we have this amount per second is using up so that means if we now look into this result it seems that 0.2 mole butane actually react with 1.3 mole oxygen and they can produce the 0.8 mole carbon dioxide per second. Since product is forming is obviously the positive charge. But here we are just calculating uh, the concentration but when we will be directly go through the 
uh, rate of reaction yeah we have to also make sure about the uh, negative positive charge and what the quantity quantitative analysis and the result is coming <coughs> here we go just another practice problem for this particular reaction <coughs> sorry bear with me the iodate ion reacts with one mole of we can see when we see the no coefficient that means this is one mole normally one we don't write it so one mole of iodate reacts with three mole of sulfite ions and to produce one mole of iodide and three mole of sulfate ions here what rate the iodide and sulfate ions being produced if sulfite ion is disappearing at a rate of this amount so that means we have to find the rate of this sulfate ion and this iodide ion with respect to the sulfide if they ask us the iodide then we need to do the i sorry iodide then we need to do the with respect to iodate we could uh, measure or calculate the rate of forming iodide, iodide and sulfate so similar formula we will apply here the sulfide and iodide mole ratio the sulfide and iodide mole ratio actually 1 is to 3 so 1 and here is a coefficient 3 and we have per unit second the concentration of sulfite disappearing is 10 exponent 2.4 times 10 exponent 4 mole per second so we find out our answer in our second part we apply the molar ratio between the sulfate and sulfide since we need to find out the rate of sulfate i also see we will have to write on the top and the down will be a uh, sulfide uh, i i just want to say that um, yeah so you can see this i i wrote the three mole sulfide three mole iodide sulfate divided by and also right so this mole per second sulfide sulfide nullify so we have this and this 3 3 nullifies so ultimately finally this is our answer 2.4 times 10 exponent 4 mole per sulfate this is the rate per second here yeah. so now we can see that coefficient is so important and we can get this information from coefficient of specific balancing equation we can also learn rate with respect to one product or reacted by using the coefficient by applying equation we can determine rates with respect to other reactants and product that i already elaborated um, just earlier Here, I go, here we go another combustion reaction of propane that we can see here the one mole propane this is also homogeneous reaction since heterogeneous reactions is more complicated so in this chapter we will be focusing on the homogeneous reaction propane react with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water here we could see the ratio and if we say the rate of oxygen how we can be expect, we all expressed we already learned the rate of anything or any substance x equal to the change in concentration per unit time per unit time means unit change in time and since as we mentioned that the reactants are using up so when we will express our rate of reactants with respect to reactants the rate expression will always negative also we have to divide with the coefficient 
so the rate of reaction then finally can be calculated by dividing the relative rate for oxygen or any other reagent or product by coefficient so here if we mention specifically oxygen so we have to divide it by 5 because we can see the 5 mole oxygen here reacting with 1 mole of propane so now if we consider the rate of so how we can write the rate we will follow the same fashion and we can write like that the rate with respect to propane the coefficient 1 oxygen coefficient 5 but we need to put the minus because there's a reactance but in case of product we will follow the same but it will be plus sign because product are forming now the same uh, reaction same type of uh, similar type of butane bond in oxygen react uh, reaction we can see here and here the rate we have with this respect to I mean the rate we have the burning of butane is 0 0.2 mole per liter per second what is the rate for the reaction independent of any of the reactants or products so the rate with respect to butane this information concentration we know and we also know the ratio of um, this butane with other reagent or products so in this case what information we have we have the concentration per second concentration rate of concentration per second and we have the coefficient so we can write the rate of this reaction with respect to butane that butane is a reactance here so negative del change of butane concentration and del t so here we will be finding the concentration changing 0 0.20 mole per liter per second so then what we were finding here sorry the 0 0.1 mole per liter per second the rate it makes a sense because the total here is 2 and here we can find the less and also we see here the rate that uh, we had the minus the total rate change with respect to butane and since the disappear uh, the reactants concentration disappearing so this is this is also going to be negative so minus minus plus and finally our rate will our rate of reaction will here with respect to butane will positive now we can measure the rate of reaction with respect to reagent or product from experimental data by graphical presentation in the curve by measuring the slope we can finding out the rate also rate now if we look into this reaction here hydrogen iodide is deco hydrogen iodide decomposition reaction at 508 degrees celsius if we look into the table we can see that the reaction started with 0.1 mole per liter 
per second so obviously in the start point time is zero begin and then we can see the different time chains the concentration disappearing is also different so that means from this data table we obviously calculate the rate of reaction with respect to hydrogen iodide any any concentration time changing rate we could do the average like initial 0.1 to last 350 second 0.0265 mole per liter per second we can also do like from 0 to 50 we can also do a different interval now if we look into the graph how we can calculate the slope slope actually we can measure slope equal to the y2 minus yy divided by x x2 minus x1 so this is the x-axis time and this is the y-axis concentration so from this concentration time con changing the concentration disappearing and uh, with the time so from this data table we can calculate the slope so we can see here a uh, tangent line we will consider uh, this concentration for the concentration change with uh, time for calculating the slope as we know the slope changing concentration per change in time so the point the line touches at particular momentary of time is called the tangent line so here we could see here the point if we see this point 0 0.029 mole and if we see 110 second so if we put this value we can consider calculate the rate with respect to the ascent actually the same graph i just want to um, point out the three point initial rate we normally consider at zero time instantaneous rate is the slope of a tangent line just we saw here at a particular point or moment and average rate we measure this is kind of slope of line that connecting from the beginning to end average so kind of change change of product formation per change of time here we will using the same experimental data and we can also see how we can calculate the slope and rate of reaction from this tangent line at the initial point so that means we can calculate or estimate the initial rates of reaction by calculating the slope so if we consider the initial and if we um, make a line which touches the change of time so we could see the value is here almost 0 0.1 0 0.09 means 0 0.1 and here if we come in a 130 second so this is how we can also calculate the slope and as we learn that when we calculate measure the rate of reaction we will write the change of concentration per change in time and we have to divide it by the coefficient so this is our then final result
in part 2 lecture we will be discussing about the rate laws and different orders of reaction with some practice problems thank you